Good morning and good afternoon and good evening. Today, we are thrilled to present the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm JJ, your host. Today, we're here with boy Dominic Hemskirk, directly from Amsterdam. Hello, Hello boy. Everybody. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for having me. Great uh, having you here. I, I love what you're doing. And uh, let's uh, deep dive into your mission, which is to plant one million bamboo before 2030, right? That is uh, that's correct, uh, JJ. Uh, to tackle climate change, we uh, need to put in a lot of effort and we need to uh, scale uh, uh, big time uh, and to uh, go from uh, 50 gigatons of what we are admitting now to going uh, negative to reach our uh, climate uh, ambitious we have uh, ambitions. We have to scale this uh, massively, and uh, yeah, that's our mission to do the first million hectares before 2030. 30. And this million hectare bamboo is going to cost. Or first, this million hectare bamboo is like a big garden, right? How big is a million hectare? Uh, one million hectares is just under one million soccer fields. So just try to envision a, a soccer field. Uh, put that times uh, a million and, and that, then you have what we want to uh, reforce between before 2030 and uh, you were asking what will that cost exactly uh, yeah, to yeah. make a calculation to uh, fully own a hectare to to buy it and also to uh, have all the labor and the seeds to reforest it uh, take a target price of about uh, 5000 euro a hectare and then you end up on uh, on 5 billion and um, we need way more money than 5 billion to really make a dent uh, into the carbon emissions and uh, store more carbon. And uh, 5 billion, it, it is a good uh, beginning. So 5 billion is 5,000 million, right? Uh, that is 5,000 million, uh, exactly, JJ. Okay, <laughs> okay. so that's, that's a big number. Um, I, I don't have it right now, so we'll have to look for investors, right? And that's the first part I think you're you're focusing now is like the first round is what did you mention like hundred million something like that? Yes, the first round uh, for the for the fund and it's called uh, Bambuku Fund will be uh, one hundred million. Uh, we already have an, uh, a pipeline of uh, over two hundred thousand hectares that we uh, that we can uh, invest in, and um, that will be just the beginning because every year is a new planting year. And every year you want to uh, multiply the amount that you have already done uh, the year before. You want to grow in every uh, aspect. Uh, and uh, one planting year, it will also give returns for the coming decades. And then when those seeds are in and uh, also enough uh, taking care of those hectares, then we can start each year a new planting year. And that will uh, compound on each other uh, very nicely. Absolutely. Okay, so um, I think we talked um, some um, about um, the, the mission, which is like really uh, just like sounds crazy, but actually it's not that crazy. Uh, it's just amazing. Um, let's let's deep dive a little bit into um, your person. What's your journey? Where do you come from? What's your motivation? Um, and uh, some more questions. But let's start first with let, let's give us some some more info about you. So, so well, yeah. So, 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 so thank you for the for, for that uh, introduction already. What you said. Uh, uh, I'm in Amsterdam now. I'm originally from Holland, and in the last five years, I have lived and been in the tropics uh, a, a long time, and that was uh, when really the uh, love for nature started growing on me, and uh, also have has given me uh, many more perspectives of what life is about because. Uh, I'm from Holland. We are a very flat country. Uh, we we, yeah. we don't have the tropical weather, or the, we, we we did the last few days. And um, um, what I've seen in the tropics with the biodiversity, uh, and it is something that is in need in, in in all of us. When when you see that nature, you get that that feeling of awe and that biodiversity, the connection with with all the animals and, and the plants. Um, that really uh, makes you so motivated to protect those uh, millions uh, of years old uh, forests. 
uh, because uh, we have not been taking care uh, of nature uh, uh, well over the last uh, 50, 100 uh, before that years. At all. <laughs> yes, ex exactly. And what uh, took millions of years to create, we can uh, destroy it uh, in a day or in, in one forest fire. And uh, that is why it is so extremely important um, to go to the places that are far from home and get your feet on the ground to, to see those farms, to see those forests and um, really uh, be on the ground with protecting that in, instead of only uh, looking at the documentaries and getting pessimistic about the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you, you've traveled a lot and right now you're, you're back in Amsterdam and uh, trying to really uh, get this uh, startup bootstrapped and, and taking it off, right? Yes, exactly. Very cool. Very cool. And um, so the big question, the very technical question, the critical question, why bamboo? <laughs> <laughs> why bamboo? I, I think uh, I'm sure on the podcast it already has been uh, preached uh, a lot. <laughs> yes, and, um, it has. <laughs> and uh, the, the, to, to give the summary of it, uh, we, we need a sustainable source of timber and bamboo if, is the best, if not uh, one of the best, if not the best option for a new sustainable form of timber. After it has taken its time to root, uh, you can harvest between 15 and 20 percent each year. And uh, bamboo being a grass, it, it, it grows even uh, uh, back better, uh, better okay. back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, that's and, almost and, political. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Trying not to stumble uh, over it. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, why bamboo? It is uh, the the fastest growing plant for for storing carbon, and um, I think it is very important uh, also to elaborate. Uh, we are not looking at only using bamboo. Uh, exactly. <laughs> bamboo you will find as a, as a piece of the whole forest structure. And 100% uh, bamboo, uh, that, that is not how you will find it in nature. Uh, very little monocultures that you will find in nature, uh, only on the places where we have planted them. Exactly. And so we, we talked about that before, and you mentioned something which I really like, is you want to do agroforestry mostly with bamboo, but also include local timber and endemic timber, and, and timber which has like good... Uh, which which works well with bamboo forest and like mimic natural forest, right? Yes, exactly. The the bamboo is uh, also there to to store the water and ex uh, especially to store the water during dry season. When you have one hectare of bamboo, it can store up to forty five thousand liters. What it then distributes again to the to the other uh, trees and shrubs that are on on the hectare, and and uh, to only grow bamboo, it, um, uh, it wouldn't be the most beneficial. You want to have the other species that are working well together. Absolutely. Um, we are Harder. also looking uh, at uh, Kirikiri tree. Uh, I don't know if you know the Kirikiri tree. No. <laughs> it is, uh, it's the world's fastest growing uh, hardwood tree. And where it takes a teak tree, for example, to uh, five to tw tw 25 years to be harvested, a kiri kiri tree can be harvested at the same time that you can harvest the first bamboo poles. Oh. Uh, so let's say about uh, one decade. And after a decade, you have one cubic meter of timber for each tree that, that you are planting. And what is the most important about this uh, tree? Uh, after you cut it, after 10 years, uh, a new tree will grow back. back out of the same root system yeah. so where now for our timber supply we have uh, so many uh, emissions for when the tree is being cut and then all the soil carbon that is going into the air again and uh, with the kirikiri kiri, kiri tree you can have uh, a harvest uh, seven times out of the same root system and before uh, when it is creating that root system uh, it will only grow back uh, faster the, se the second time uh, so it's kind of similar to bamboo, but only seven times. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. So where, where a bamboo uh, uh, growth can give up to uh, 100 years uh, or yeah. sometimes even longer uh, on timber. Uh, with this tree, we have to do it with uh, with seven decades. Seven decades. And, uh, okay. 
in seven <laughs> decades, we're only almost living at 2000, uh, at 2100. 21. And um, uh, I'm uh, personally, I'm optimistic that we have uh, solved climate change uh, before that. Let's hope because it's uh, a big thing. Uh, okay. Um, the other thing was regarding your hat. So <laughs> your hat is from Panama. Why Panama? <laughs> Please enlighten us. <laughs> Um, personally, I, I, I believe that uh, Panama, it has the best infrastructure, it has the best fundamentals of becoming a, a next great nation. Because uh, Panama, it is such a strategic place. You have the Panama Canal and 10% um, of global uh, uh, trade is going through that canal. Uh, they have a very stable political situation and they have a very stable uh, banking situation. And for biodiversity, uh, Panama is the place where the Americas are being connected. So you have the most biodiversity and that biodiversity is the most important uh, to protect first. Because if you can uh, protect that connecting piece and then do the reforestation on the degraded uh, hectares of, of that country mm -hmm. and together with all those species that you will find on that place and um, then Panama is becoming the, the little treasury of all that biodiversity. Yeah, that's and, the, the other topic we talked, sorry to interrupt you, but that's the carbon banking approach, right? Yes, yes, the, the carbon uh, banking. Um, for all the um, uh, carbon that we are emitting now, uh, the, the big polluters, uh, they, they have to buy their tons back, uh, what they are uh, polluting. And there are, it's only a, a small amount of, um, a big reforestation or uh, carbon uh, sequestration uh, companies that are existing now and um, the amount of ton that uh, is being done it is it is growing very quickly uh, and we still have a very big way uh, way, way to go and um, that that the hectare of land uh, there's only a finite amount of amount of hectares that are on the world and uh, yeah we will store the the carbon uh in the plants for generations and when we start harvesting the bamboo we can store the bamboo in in, in our houses uh, in our flooring uh, and that is how we will bank uh, the carbon for multiple decades okay so there is so much potential <laughs> um now um you also mentioned eco villages and uh, the bio economy within the eco villages on or or on the, the the bamboo reforested lands um maybe you can say something about that now yes uh, of course <laughs> um so uh, many people have have the dream of of buying land and uh, start building your your own project and li live there with it with a community and uh, generally the uh, uh, the the barrier of going to a place like that it is it is very high uh, because you're only on one place and you have to move to the uh, to the other place on on, on the globe and um, uh, our reforestation uh, approach and buying the land we want to be a global community of communities so the people that are dreaming ab about having their own hectare or hectares of land uh, we will provide those hectares. And then other people can come with their community and um, then we can start building our own uh, bio economy because uh, you want to be uh, able to produce as many uh, of your resources as, as possible and uh, to start with uh, the hectares and then the, uh, the people, then we can make step three, the, the, the economy and um, yeah, it makes it a multiple decade uh, approach. Fantastic. So um, this is interesting because this is the community of communities, right? Approach yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's pretty, uh, that's that's a, a novelty, I believe, within agroforestry uh, and within the agroforestry fund. Um, so um, pretty cool. Um, so- um, I could elaborate on it a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, because uh, when you start a, a carbon project, and we will show the uh, the, the carbon statistics uh, uh, later, yeah. uh, when you start a carbon project, only focusing on the carbon credits 
uh, it, it's it, 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 it can be a nice approach, but you need more revenue streams. You don't want to only focus on one revenue stream that is uh, has shown to be quite volatile. Okay, it is storing the carbon, but you also have lots of land that, that you can sell. And what I said earlier, if you can buy the hectares for on average 5,000 uh, US dollar uh, and you uh, sell 10% of those hectares, uh, uh, one hectare you can easily sell for, for 50,000. So in that way, you you have a way of making your money back with buying those hectares and then all the carbon credits, all the forestry, all the food that you're going to produce that will be uh, on top of it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is, uh, again, why it is so important also to have the community aspect on it of starting the, the eco villages. Absolutely. And instead of just having like the, the agroforestry where you have like no space for people, you're including the people, you're including the communities. So this is uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, so regarding Bambuku, what can you tell me about the team? Who's behind there? I mean, you're the brain, um, uh, you're the founder, but uh, tell me a little bit more about um, the others, please. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so th thank you for uh, giving a possibility to, to elaborate on it. So uh, yeah, I'm I'm the founder of Bambuku. I've been uh, in the ID maze for for this project for quite some time to to find the right recipe of making that work and also the right structure of making that work. What is in a fund structure, and to structure the the fund, we have a very talented lawyer that is working on this project. She's working uh, pro bono on it. She already has 160 different entities that she is managing. And she has a very big experience with structuring funds, uh, raising the funds, equity and debt deals. Uh, in uh, Panama, we already have a, a group of people that uh, have experience with, uh, with forestry. Uh, what one friend of the, that he's, uh, he's from Canada, he has already worked uh, for over a decade in the forestry industry. And well, so Canadians escaped Canada and are now in, in Panama. That's uh, and, different. And, and I can talk for everybody and they sure did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cool. And um, uh, other part of the team that uh, are organizations that are helping with uh, the fundraising. Uh, there are marketing agencies and they have over uh, 4 million investors uh, in their network. And uh, they help with uh, the fundraising of reaching uh, those investors. Um, so this is like you mentioned that before also like the, the first part now is to get the early investors and uh, they have like some goodies because they would be like the first one investing right so they have like I think no management fee or something like that. Yes, uh, th th that's correct. So the, the first investors that uh, want to be involved uh, in this fund, uh, they will get a, a complete discount on the, on the management fee. And uh, the carried interest that is part of the performance fee mm -hmm. will be uh, will be lowered as well. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So um, wow, well, we you have a pretty uh, strong um, like setup already or structure, uh, let's say. Also with this whole Panama uh, structure, I believe, which is uh, another uh, screen we'll see later um, mm -hmm. or later now, I think. <laughs> yes. So I will start sharing. Yes, please. Mm -mm -mm. Your entire screen. There it is. Fantastic. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Spectacular. So not many people notice JJ, uh, but um, more than uh, 3.4 million uh, soccer fields pool of forest is being uh, lost uh, every year. Wow, um, that's savage. It's, uh, it, can you imagine uh, what one soccer field in, in front of you now and then do that times uh, 3.4 million and mm. then you will have a, a view of uh, how big uh, the problem is. And that's each year, each year. That, that, that is each year. And wow. um, that, that uh, yeah, comes down to 3.75 million hectares. And um, that has to go to, to zero by 2030 as well to mm -hmm. really make an effort to, to uh, keep the Paris Agreement. Uh, we have to go to zero deforestation by 2030. Um, 
so this is also where that one million uh, hectare example uh, came uh, came from why that is our goal because one mil uh, the 3.75 million hectares that has to go to zero and then we have to make up for every uh, everything that uh, that has been lost uh, already previously yeah yes <laughs> yeah and okay so this looks good so this is a, this is an overview of all the global emissions and uh, the global emissions based in gigatons uh, so you will see that we are admitting 40 gigatons of carbon uh, each year uh, and that has to go to uh, uh, zero by 2050 to keep the uh, paris uh, agreement um, and uh, this is a, an, a, an, a graph of how the carbon market has grown uh, over the last uh, 11 or so years. Mm -hmm. uh, and you already see a 10x in the amount of retirements that has happened from 2011 to 2021. Uh, what are retirements, maybe, uh, to uh, elaborate? Yeah, th thank you. For <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> uh, so um, the retirement is one uh, uh, ton of carbon first it has been uh, admitted then an organization like bambuku is coming in between and we store one ton of carbon and then the polluter can buy that certificate from us and use that ton of carbon in uh, admissions and when it is using it it is retiring it okay and issuance would be what's available or Yes, that is uh, that is what uh, what came available in that time. So that are uh, forest projects, um, and that is then part uh, forest projects. What are is the uh, avoided deforestation, and other parts is uh, pure reforestation. Um, we mostly see uh, um, uh, avoided deforestation projects now because they uh, you can still buy those hectares uh, often uh, often in bulk. And after a forest has been uh, cleared, uh, the hectare becomes worth more, and then often the people start start farming uh, on it. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, part of those uh, issuance that uh, that is not retired yet, uh, that are people that are keeping those uh, tons, and they are expecting an increase uh, in the value. And it is so also it's already like carbon banking happening. Yes. Yes. The, wow! The this is huge. Yes, it, it, it definitely is huge, and uh, the, the the industry has been growing over the last twenty years. Uh, at, at the beginning, uh, quite quite slowly, and now the last few years we have seen it explode, and we are still uh, on the early days. Mm -hmm. Because if you look uh, in in this graph, you can see one um, hundred uh, x uh, times the size uh, in two thousand fifty. Um, so where in 2020 it was just 100 uh, million uh, tons, about, uh, it will go up to uh, 13 uh, uh, gigatons of what can be uh, uh, stored. So you're telling me we have a 100x potential of, of growth here? Uh, yes, that is exactly what I'm saying, uh, JJ. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is the perfect time to, to get into this market because uh, with a hectare of land, it is quite easily to make a calculation how many uh, tons of carbon are being stored or how many uh, uh, tons can we uh, store uh, additionally in, in the future. Uh, and uh, the prices of those carbon credits, they are not being calculated in into that market price yet. Mm -hmm. So the hectares you can get for, for, for a discount, do the carbon uh, project and and yeah, we are living in a wonderful time where you can uh, can be paid for uh, regrowing uh, the forest again. Wow. And, and to uh, to show the uh, potential supply of the carbon credits uh, by 2030, uh, if you look at the graph, more than uh, uh, half of those credits, the potential supply is by nature-based solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the techno technology-based removals on, on top. And um, even though technology it, it is great in so many uh, aspects, we aren't there with the skill yet to uh, really go into the gigaton uh, range. And uh, the nature-based solutions, uh, they will be way easier scalable. 
and they will have all the additional benefits uh, of getting um, the animals back. Uh, Food, uh, biodiversity, yes, climate uh, regulation, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> and, and that is exactly what, what we need. And um, to show you uh, our pipeline. Uh, exactly. So this is the, the reforestation pipeline. Yes. Well, I, not I, only, but we're going to see. Uh, well, yes. yeah. OK. Uh, so uh, here you can see the forest startup uh, pipeline. So all these hectares that you see here that are different projects that uh, Bambuku uh, is going to invest in in the future. The, the blue lines they uh, that are um, mangrove restoration uh, and conservation uh, projects. Uh, uh, here the yellow the, are uh, rice fields and all what is uh, light and dark green are forestry projects. Um, this is over 100,000 uh, uh, hectares. Then um, here we have our own reforestation uh, efforts. What is another up to 200,000 uh, hectares. And um, we want to uh, focus on the degraded uh, grassland and uh, also on, on sugar farms that can be converted back into, into nature. Uh, and um, we have a strong focus on, on Latin America, Central America, uh, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Venezuela, Argentina, Uruguay, Brazil. Um, what I said earlier, want to be that global community of, of communities and that mm -hmm. will only work if we really uh, operate uh, globally. Um, Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so this is a uh, lot of uh, planning there. I see factory, factory, working factory. Yes, so, so what is important to elaborate on, um, it are not only uh, forestry startups, these are projects that are in different stages of development. Some uh, uh, projects already have a, a working uh, working forest and they only need money to, to buy a factory. Uh, others are already planted a few years. Uh, others uh, are just uh, pure in the in the in the seed uh, stage mm -hmm. and um, also good to mention we also have uh, cook stove projects uh, in uh, in the portfolio uh, so those cook stoves cook stoves have been given out to many community mostly uh, communities mostly in Africa and they are also uh, already producing uh, uh, carbon credits wow. of uh, defor uh, avoided uh, deforestation um, that's a big topic, actually, uh, because obviously in third world countries, they have to cook their food and they need some kind of fuel. And most of the time it's, it's wood and that wood is like a native forest if there is any left. And uh, as soon as there is none left, well, it's the big issue, right? As yes. the Eastern Islands or and a lot of other examples. Yes, yeah. so it, it, it sure is. It, it sure is. And... Um, uh, if people uh, want to stay in contact with uh, with Bambuku, if they are an investor that are interested in in, in onboarding uh, on uh, bambuku.com, uh, 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 you will find more uh, about me, uh, the, the the team. Uh, our... That's the website, bambuku.com. Yes, bambuku.com. Okay, there we have it. It's b a m b o u k u dot com. Exactly. Fantastic, fantastic. Exactly. Awesome. Uh, bamboo with uh, one less uh, o and then uh, uku at the end. <laughs> fantastic. And um, if people are an accredited uh, e investor, they can get in contact with us uh, from uh, from the the, the form. And uh, we will send them more about the uh, uh, fund structure. And um, yeah, we're looking forward to, to onboarding uh, investors and, and citizens and uh, start that uh, global community of like-minded uh, foresters. Can't wait to see it happen, man. Fantastic. Boy, Dominic, thank you very much for uh, your time. Um, and uh, we keep talking. Thank you so much, JJ. And uh, oh. lovely meeting you all. All the best. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.